what up YouTube? This is knowledge of self determination. Um, I came to uh, give you guys an update on the Dylan Roofs uh, situation. If you guys have not heard about what happened with Dylan Roof, he has been sentenced to the death penalty. So it may be about eight or ten years or so. He'll actually, you know, get the gas chamber or the electric chair, whatever they or or lethal injection. Um, so yeah, so for all of those who you know want to dance and holler for joy, you know now's your time. Um, I don't have an opinion. I don't have an opinion or a thought either way about him receiving the death penalty. Um, my whole thing would have been, I would have been outraged if he wasn't convicted at all. That would have been a kick in the balls. Sorry for the language. That would have been a kick in the balls. It would have been a slap in the face for every black person on the planet if this guy would have been able to uh, actually you know, be let free and, and be acquitted of these crimes. He killed nine people. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read some of the reports, you know, so you guys can get a feel for how the, how the sentencing went. But in fact, before I even do that, I'm going to read some of this, some, some, a little bit of background on Dylan Roof. Um, I don't know, Roof, I don't know if any of you guys knew, but he actually had a website. Um, let's see. Start here at the top. Dylan Storm Roof's website hinted at why he chose historic Charleston to shoot nine people to death at Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church in South Carolina, along with a long hate-filled creed, I'm supposing that should say creed, uh, the 21-year-old included photos of himself burning an American flag, taking aim with a pistol, and posing proudly at sites connected to the Confederacy. Okay, um... Now, just a little bit of history on, on the whole AM, African Methodist Episcopal, uh, the whole AME uh, title. Um, the reason why that is called the African Methodist Episcopal Church is because, see, during a time when, during slavery, basically, during the time when there was a lot of uh, hatred towards black people, during, during the slavery era, I'll say that, during the slavery era, let's just go ahead and just say it, put it out there. Um, black people were not allowed to go to church with white people. Um, in fact, if there were white churches that allowed black people, um, they would be pulled off their knees while they're praying and kicked out of the church. So some, um, some black people went, came together and decided to, you know, basically merge their churches together. The Methodists decided to merge their church with the Episcopal, the uh, black Episcopal people. And that's where you basically, this is a loose rendering of the history of that, um, Right here on this site, you could actually go there. I'll actually put the link in there. This will actually give you some information on how the whole AME thing started. And as you can see, 1794, this was well into the slavery era. This was um, maybe about 60 or 70 years before emancipation. So that is some of the history with that. Um, now... I'm going to go ahead and read some uh, some of the reports here. In fact, no, I'm going to go back to this here. Yeah, so let's see. At this moment, I realized that something was very wrong. The manifesto said, how could the news be blowing up the Trayvon Martin case while hundreds of these black on white murders got ignored? So that was part of what fueled his rage um, so far as giving him reason to want to kill black people in his church. Let's see and what he wrote here. I have no choice, Roof wrote. I am not in the position to, alone, go into the ghetto and fight. I chose Charleston because it is most historic. It is most historic. It is, I guess it is the most historic city in my state. And at one time, had the highest ratio of blacks to whites in the, count, in the country. We have no skinheads, no real KKK, no one doing anything but talking on the internet. Well, someone has to have the bravery to take it to the real world. And I guess that has to be me. So... I guess this is how he, you know, pretty much talked himself into, you know, giving himself reasons for why he wanted to go into his church and slaughter all of these people. Um, some victims, family members called the 22 year old Ruth evil and deserving of the death penalty for the June 17, 2015 attack at Emmanuel African Methodist uh, Episcopal Church, though it is African American congregation in the American South. I want your soul to burn in hell, said Gail Jackson, a niece of 87-year-old victim Susie Jackson. Others said their Christian faith required them to forgive. They echoed comments at Ruth, Ruth's first court appearance after the, shop, the shooting, where 
several victims' relatives shocked the country with their merciful tone toward the su suspect. Um, yeah, so there were some people who hated his guts and other people who, you know, wanted to forgive him, you know? Now, let's see what this report says. Saunders clutched the bloodstained Bible. She took to church on the fateful evening of June 17, 2015 in Charleston, South Carolina. Even though it's all bru bruised, torn up, shot up, she told Ruth, she still cherished her book. It reminds me of the blood Jesus shed for me and you, Dylan Ruth. It will never lose its power. I feel sad for you, she told him. Yes, I forgive you. That was the easiest thing I had to do. But you can't help someone who don't want to help themselves. May God have mercy on your soul. I mean, that was just one opinion from one person. Um, let's see, another another version of this. Um, a jury of nine whites and three blacks last month found Ruth guilty of 33 federal charges, including hate crimes and obstruction of religion, resulting in death. On Tuesday, the jurors recommend he be put to death. Wednesday, sentencing by U.S. District Judge Richard Gurgle, I hope I'm saying his last name right, was a formality after the jury's unanimous verdict. Ruth, who also faces a death sentence if convicted of state murder charges, is unlikely to be executed anytime soon due to a lengthy appeals process. I wish they could enact an, another law to cut off a limb each time you go up to appeal, said Tyrone Sanders, whose son, Taiwanza Sanders, 26, died in the shooting. I mean, can't be angry for him feeling that way. You know, he, this this man, this, this guy caused a lot of damage to a lot of people. A lot of people. Um, let's see. I'm going to read some more stuff. And then I'm just going to, you know, just updating you guys on what happened and um, and giving you some of the, uh, the family's um, statements and everything like that. After more than 30 friends, relatives, and fellow church members addressed Ruth in court, he offered no response. Given the opportunity to address the court before his death, death sentence was handed down. Ruth and his attorneys remained silent. No one offered to speak on Ruth's behalf. Ruth went on to become the 60th person on the federal death row. After choosing to represent himself during the penalty phase of the trial, Ruth has already asked for new attorneys, attorneys to represent him in his motion for a new trial. Jurgle or Gurgle, I'm sorry for mangling this man's last name or this person's last name, on Wednesday rejected that request, but he granted Ruth's motion to give him more time with a request for a new trial. Charleston Church Shooter I would like to make it crystal clear I do not regret what I did. This is apparently a quote from Dylan Ruth. What follows remain unclear, although it will be some time before Ruth enters a federal execution chamber, if that ever occurs. The federal government last executed an inmate in 2003 when Lewis Jones Jr., a Gulf War veteran, was put to death for the 1995 kidnapping, rape, and murder of Tracy Joy McBride, a 19-year-old Army recruit two years earlier. I'm sorry, Army recruit. Two years earlier, the government executed Timothy McVeigh for the Oklahoma City bombing and Juan Raul Garza for murdering three men. Okay, so that's just a little bit of history on people who have been executed by the federal government. Let's see. You didn't accomplish anything but deep hurt for other people, said Shireen Goss, or Joss, sister of Taiwanza Sanders, one of Ruth's victims. You're going to realize you didn't have to do this. It's going to hit you hard and bring you to your knees. So, let's see. So basically, that that's it. That's all I wanted to really, you know, break to you guys. Um, and just give you some of the um, statements from some of the family members who attended the uh, the hearing for this guy. Yeah, so he's been sentenced to death. You know, let me know what you guys think about this. Um, this is this was a tragedy when it happened, and apparently, and, and, and the messed up thing is, when he killed when he killed these people, he actually waited for them to actually for them to be bowing their heads while they prayed, and then he opened fire on them like they were bowing their heads in prayer. And he stood up with his with his with his Glock, his forty five, and he killed these people. You know, so let me know what you guys think about this. Um, how do you guys feel about Dylan Ruth? Uh, 
getting the death penalty. Um, you guys feel sorry for him? Do, do any of you guys out there forgive him for what he's done? Let me know what you think in the comment section. This is not a self-determination, and I'm out. Peace.